Okay, so I received a lot of comments about the rain art piece of art that I did and um, the one with the umbrella and the raindrops falling down and so I thought I would do a little bit of a tutorial to teach you how to do this style where the words are in white and the painting is in a different color and this has kind of become the background and color scheme of the art that I do and so I thought I would share how I create this type of art. To start I'm using the assembly app and I'm opening up an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of artwork and you can see it's blank here. I'm going to choose text from the bottom and insert a new text object and I'm going to type in my first word which is inspire. It actually should be inhale but I'll fix that later. Um, it's inherently it inherently wants to capitalize the first letter so I go back in and I add the second or I add a second I in and delete the first I uh, place it in my space and then I add a second object or a second word so in this case it's courage same thing delete the capital insert it in and go from there Now that I have all four words inserted into my piece of artwork, I'm going to change how large they are. So I'm going to click and drag and make everything all the same length or same size, center it on my canvas, and then select each of my individual letters or words. In this case, I'm actually now fixing the inspire to inhale. I screwed up the first time. So now I'm going to put them all together how I want them to appear on my vinyl. So I'm moving inhale closer to courage and I'm going to move fear a little bit closer to exhale and then I believe move everything apart, make sure that it's set exactly how I like it to be and make sure everything is nice and centered. Move exhale down a little bit. I want a little bit more space in between courage and exhale. And at this point, I don't really care what color anything is because it's eventually all going to turn black once I get to the next program. Once I'm happy with my work, I'm going to click Save to Library and it will save it to my photos on my iPad. And once I've got that done, now I'm going to switch to the Cricut app, and which is where I'm going to actually create the vinyl piece itself. And I'm going to select New Project. And I am going to select Upload and select Picture from Photo Library. I'm going to find that piece of art that I just did, the Inhale Courage, and I'm going to create basically a new uploaded image. So it's going to ask me to clean up and I want to tap the areas I want to remove. So I'm removing anything that's white. So all I want left is the background of each of the letters. Um, and so I have to tap inside each of the insides of the letters so you can see to the right hand side. As I click the insides of the O, the A, the G, so on and so forth, those start to disappear. And what I end up with is just plain letters and it will create an image that will cut for me. Now that I've got that finished, it's going to ask if I want to despeckle or smooth. I don't need to do that, and it wants me to name my image. I can choose cut image or print and then cut, so I just want to cut it out. So I'm naming it, and I'm going to save it. Once I've saved it, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to click insert in the lower right hand corner, and it's going to insert it into the canvas. Right now it's too big, so I need to zoom out a little bit and I need to shrink it down because my canvas is only, my mat is only 12 inches wide. So here I need to make sure that it is the right size. And right now it's showing that it's about a little less than eight inches. And so I want to move it down to about seven inches. But at the bottom, I want it to be no more than the size of my paper, obviously, which is 11 inches tall. So here I've got it to a point where I really like it. And I'm gonna click the make it in the bottom. I wanna move it down from the top so it fits on my vinyl. And once I've got it done, I'm gonna click continue in the bottom. At this point, I'm now gonna stick the vinyl down to the light grip Cricut mat, making sure that it's nice and lined up as 
straight as I can. Uh, go up a little bit above the top line only because I want to make sure it's not cutting off the top. Uh, my machine has been doing that for some reason. Um, make sure there's no bubbles in it and I'm going to set the machine to vinyl. Make sure it's nice and smooth on the on the mat. Again, no air bubbles, nice and stuck down. And once I've got it all stuck, I'm gonna insert the mat into the machine and click the continue button in the lower right hand corner of the Cricut app. Okay, so now my um, mat and vinyl are completely cut. I like how it turned out. So you, can, you can't really see it very well. Um, but if you turn it just the right way in the light, you can see the wording that is on there. So what I need to do now is I need just the letters and I don't need all of this background and this stuff over here we can get rid of. So I'm going to peel this off of the background and they're very handy and they give you a grid line on the back. So I got to figure out where my edge is. So it's right about here. And I'm going to cut a little further over because I want to make sure that I don't get that, you know, cut through that last letter. I'm going to use my scissors and cut that away. So now I have this piece of vinyl that's just about as wide as I need it to be. And so now what I need to do is, oh, I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom down here as well. The nice thing about the Cricut is that you can kind of see, you can't really see it. Um, it cuts through just the vinyl and not the backing, um, which is awesome because then it creates these vinyl stickers, basically. Um, so I'm going to cut this little piece off as well. This stuff is expensive, so you can, you want to save as much of it as you possibly can. Um, so you can make a small stick or something like that. So now it's totally cut down. Um, so now what I'm going to do is weed out all of this stuff that I don't need and just leave what I have left. Okay, so again, I'm going to use this Upo paper, um, and it's, the, again, I'm using the Pixis brand, because um, that happens to be what I have. And so at this point, what we're going to do, I'm going to set my paper aside. I'm trying to touch it as little as possible, but in, in a minute here, it's not going to work, so I'm going to touch the heck out of it. Um, what you want to try and do is pull up the contact paper while at the same time pulling up the vinyl lettering with it. Um, sometimes it's cooperative and sometimes it's not and it looks like this evening it is not going to be cooperative so if it's a little obstinate you can go back over it again with the scrapey tool and try to adhere it down a little bit better. Um, Sometimes working from a different corner works a little better. So there you can see it's starting to pull up some of those letters. In order to make this work really well, I used the Cricut scraping tool to kind of peel up the bottoms of each of the letters. It was very difficult to get this particular one up. It was, did not want to come off at all. And so I had to go slowly. And this is about two times the normal speed of how it would be, how, how long it would take. Um, I use the pointy tool to stick it back down to the contact paper because I want the letters to be as smooth and perfect as possible. And once I get all of the letters up, I'm going to stick them down to the contact or the, the UPO paper once I'm done.
Once I have all of the letters off, I want to make sure again that the letters are as flat as possible. So I'm using this sharp little hooked dental tool looking thing to kind of peel up my letters gently and making sure they're nice and flat, pushing down any air bubbles, double checking that everything is nice and straight. We don't want to have any extra air bubbles and spots where the letters look funky and where the ink can get underneath the letters. Now it's time to transfer everything onto the UPO paper and I don't tape it down. I don't make lines on it. I'm just going to basically eyeball it at this point. Um, you don't want to, again, you don't want any air bubbles underneath any of this stuff. So try to lay it down as straight and centered as possible. I eyeball things. Uh, I happen to be fairly decent at that. And so I'm starting in the center and gently, very, very gently laying everything down and trying to get at least the air bubbles out from underneath the letters. Uh, the rest of it I don't really care about, but underneath the letters is the best. Now I use the Cricut tool to firmly adhere the letters to the back or to the, the clear contact paper. And this is nice because it actually comes off in one fail swoop, but it actually you have to make sure that you get the letters firmly attached to the UPO paper. Um, vi the vinyl versus UPO paper is the UPO paper is going to win every time because it has a bit of a texture to it. Um, but make sure that you get that nice and stuck down to your paper. Now starting in one corner, gently grab the clear contact paper and pull it away from the UPO paper, making sure that the letters don't come up with it. They shouldn't because you've gotten them stuck down really well. This is probably the easiest part of all of this, making sure that it comes up nice and cleanly. Uh, try not to manhandle the paper too much. It'll be fine. We're just going to spray on top of it. But there we go. Comes straight off and you've got a nice clear backing for your painting. One last time, I'm going to go over the letters with the scraping tool, making sure that there's no air bubbles in each or in any of my letters. The ink does tend to eke underneath the letters if they're not stuck down really well, like in the top of that E right there. Um, anytime you've got a little narrow spot, you want to make sure that it's well stuck down. Um, just double check any spot that you've got. Make sure it's nice and stuck. And let's see how this goes. So when you're doing lettering and you want to be able to see the letters when you pull the stuff off, you actually have to make sure that you have at least all of the lettering area covered. If you want to leave some white, you totally can. And I'm going to do this, um, well, no, I'll do it straight up and down. So in this particular case or this particular painting, um, I'm going to use pastels up above and the brighters down below. I'm using my airbrush to blow things around and I'm going to start by just taking the plain 91% alcohol and kind of puddling it in this area around my words and then I'm going to start dropping my colors on. So that's the shell pink and then my peach bellini in here and my cool peri here and there. I don't want a ton of that. Um, so I could theoretically just pick up the paper and swirl it around, let it do its thing, but instead I wanna use, I'm gonna blow it a little bit. So this gets a little bit loud, but not terrible. And if I start away, from here, the, the air comes out really fast at first, and so I want it to actually be a little bit more soft. So I'm gonna start away from my painting, my puddles, and then I'm just gonna start kind of blowing it around. And they kind of muddle together, and I'm okay with that. If I want more of that finger look, I can get right down in there and push it really, you know, really push it. Um, I'm 
pink kind of goes to the side, and that's, you know, I've got this little tan up here. I'm gonna try and push some pink back the other way, but I don't really want a ton of that puddly, or that finger look. So I'm gonna add a little bit more alcohol over here. Just kind of blow to soften it. Again, same thing here. I let it sit for a second, and then I can start blowing it. And at this point, I can start adding some of my other colors on top. Dab, a little alcohol. A little blow. Not too many fingers. And I want to add in that peri color, that cool peri. cloud blue up in here just because I think it needs some blue On the lower half of the drawing, I've turned it sideways at this point, and I'm gonna start adding the bright colors on there. Uh, I'm using a poppy field, honeycomb, and purple twilight, and do the same thing that I did up on the top, and start moving the, the colors around. I like it to be a little bit brighter. It's mirroring the top, uh, just a little bit brighter of colors, but it's the same process. It's dripping alcohol, dripping paint, dripping alcohol, dripping paint using the airbrush to move things around until I get it to where I want it to. So again, I'm avoiding that finger look and trying to have it more of a cloud look. I have the finished painting at this point, and the last step with the vinyl is to take it off of the painting. So I'm trying to take each of these individual letter stickers off. When taking the stickers off, I use a tool that came with the vinyl itself. It's not the actual Cricut tool, but I help pry it up from the edge. If you use the dental tool, the little hook tends to gouge the painting underneath or the paper underneath, and I don't like that look. All right, so there you have it. Totally finished. Inhale courage, exhale fear. Thanks.